In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Not long ago, there was another shooting rampage in a school in the United States. When it was over, 17 people, mostly young people, were dead. There have been too many of such events, but what brings this one to mind was that it took place on Ash Wednesday. There was a photograph which was widely circulated at the time, which showed a woman who was obviously in great anguish, being supported in her grief by a female relative or friend. On her forehead, there could be clearly seen a cross made with ashes. I would not dream of trespassing on anyone's grief or scoring points with someone's anguish, but I could not help but hope that she at least had the comfort of her religion. There would probably not be much comfort for her in the days immediately following this event, but eventually she would come to realize that the cross she wore on her forehead could be a sign of hope in the midst of these dreadful circumstances. Those who write commentaries on news events often reflect at such times whether it is possible to find forgiveness in their hearts for the people who suffer from the results of these events. We can only hope that the woman of the photo could eventually find such forgiveness the cross on her forehead should remind us that there is no forgiveness without cost. If a person makes you angry or even irritated, something has to be done with that negative energy. It has somehow to be transmuted into goodwill. Perhaps it is impossible. But perhaps also a miracle takes place, and the hurt, and the raw, and the bitter psychic energies are turned into something else. That process involves pain. The pain that our Savior bore was not only internal. The hate and violence of the world, the political world, the religious world, the common world rained upon him, beat him, and battered him to death. Yet still he prayed, Father, forgive them. All our actions have consequences. Evil actions have evil consequences and hurt other people. According to strict justice, we should experience the consequences of our own actions. God in Christ allows himself to suffer them and transforms the violence we have inflicted and the suffering we have caused into forgiveness. And he does this from the cross. Jesus saves us not from suffering and death, but through it. There is a mystery here, I know, and many unanswered questions about his suffering and our own. The fact that suffering continues is for some people an experience of anguish and despair. Why the pain? Why the tragedy? Why cancer and heart disease? We do not know the complete answers to such questions, but the words from the cross that day, together with what happened later, lead us to believe that through suffering, good may come. Pain is a real part of life. There is no escape from it this side of death. And death will always hold some terror for us. But despite all that we remember that there, was one, there once was one who suffered more than we will ever suffer, and that through his suffering we have peace with God. He suffered for us and showed us that through suffering God accomplishes his saving word. 
The last of the three words that John included is one that speaks of victory and hope. He has provided a caring person for his mother and for his good friend. He has expressed his own thirst and his continuing identification with the human predicament. And now he is about to announce the completion of the work he has sent to do. And he does this with the words, it is finished. Again, we hear the words on two different levels. His life, of course, was finished. He was about to die. And in view of his suffering, it would no doubt be a relief to die. But there is another level, the one that reflects not only his life, but his work. He had come to do battle with the powers of evil. He had to suffer and die in that way, redeem the world. And now, with one of his final breaths, he could declare a victory. It is finished. This did not mean that the world was immediately rid of evil for all time. No, our world is in many ways not much different from the world of that time. But remember that a war is not over just because the decisive battle has been fought and won. Usually it continues for months and even years. But the cross did usher us into a new age, an age of grace, and brought the good news of a final deliverance. Which means that the words from the cross empower us to face the future with strength and a sense of purpose. The struggle between good and evil continues. Life is an ongoing conflict between the two. The cross is meant to help us take heart, to spur us on, to bolster our energies, to help us face life realistically and courageously. Christ's words, it is finished, ought to remind us that something has been accomplished once and for all, something that empowers us to fight the good fight and keep the faith even in the face of continuing evil. There was a lot of talk at the cross that day. Some of it was careless and foolish, an embarrassment to hear and to remember. Crucify him, someone said. He saved others, he cannot save himself, someone else said. But some of the words were good, some of them were life-giving. Christ's words always are. Thanks be to God.